According to my good friend Ulysses, it all starts with the beans. All right, here are my beans about to make it to the stove. I'm going to take all that stuff and add it there. They soaked overnight. That's fresh, clean water, and they're going on the stove. Remember, don't add salt to them. I'll tell you why later. There you go. Oh, what's up, condiment packet? See, you're making your triumphant return. All right, this is them done. You pull all that all that stuff out of it, all the onions and peppers and bay leaves, and you're ready to go. What up, what up? This is Double D in the place to be. We're going on another cooking journey. Well, today, I'm gonna have a burrito. I'm gonna make some burritos. But I'm trying to be good, so I'm gonna make some veggie burritos. So I've been experimenting with uh, making a sauce and marinating vegetables and roasting them in the oven. So I'm gonna do that. And uh, I made some black beans earlier. So I'm gonna refry those black beans. Mix those veggies, a little cojito cheese in it, and um, should have a pretty nice burrito. All right, stay tuned. One love, man. Start off, uh, put your corn on the fire, you know, make sure you get the corn with the husk on it. And we're going to do this to the corn all the way around until, you know, we want to get a smoky uh, taste to the to the kernels in there. So that's why I do it like this. I know it's a bit of a mess, but the flavor is well worth it. All right, now we're on to the cauliflower. I'm going to try to chop this up in small bite-sized pieces because you don't want too big because it is going in a burrito. Go. See, that's what it looks like there. All right. Now I'm gonna mess with these mushrooms. Chop, chop, chop. See the pieces I'm cutting? Not too big. And then a little bit of red pepper. Not too much, but I just like the red pepper because it gives it a little sweetness. It's really nice in there. All right. There's that. There's our corn that we just did. And chop up the end. Oh, belly saved. You see that? Nice. All right, here we go. That one. Okay, now for the marinade. I'm going to chop the heck out of these uh, chipotle chili peppers. And there's a jar of the juice. That's When you get the can of it, and I like to add that juice to the sauce. I forget to do it in the video, but I do it in the end. So you want to chop this up much as you can get it really you know macerated and I'm gonna go with the garlic here same thing with the garlic I'm gonna chop it up really good and then I'm gonna do that oregano right there chop it up really good and add the other ingredients watch this
All right, so after you add the oil, the vinegar, the cumin, the chipotle, the garlic, the, the, the oregano, the sauce, and you, you're going to mix it up, and the lemon juice. And that's, uh, that, that, that's going to be our marinade right there for the vegetables. So pour that in there. Yeah, get the spatula, get them all that. That's all good stuff. We need all that. All right, and now we're just going to mix this up. Try to get every piece all coated. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to let that sit for a bit. And then uh, this is an oiled uh, sheet pan. I'm going to spread it all out on there. And then I'm going to bake it at 375 for about 20 minutes, a half an hour, just until the broccoli's tender and uh, ready to go. See, that's a chipotle juice that I forgot to add earlier. So I'm just going to add it to that. It's all good. It'll still be... Yummy. Chipotle is wonderful. If you haven't ever, if you've never used it, use it. Okay, now I'm making uh, what I call the yin and the ying. I used to work in a restaurant, and I guess it was an anti joke between the chef and the guys that worked there, but they called uh, pico de gallo yin and the ying. So that's what I still call it to this day. So I'm making the yin and the ying. And this is how they would always make it um, everything chopped on one cutting board. Oh, glasses don't have. So we're just going to keep chopping and keep mixing, keep chopping and mixing. We're going to add it in there, squeeze some lemon juice in it, add some salt, and it's ready to go. Let me tell you, you add this to anything, sandwiches, pasta, anything, and it'll make it the bomb. Okay, so that's the yin and the yang, or as you call it, pico de gallo. <music> Okay, here you see uh, my burrito filling. I'm gonna just shot of tequila, but this is the what's going in. Watch the shake. Ooh, that was a good tequila, boy. Okay, now it's time to make the refried beans. So what you see here is I got some onions that I finally chopped and I added them to oil and I'm gonna cook them until they uh, start to turn brown. Um, this is my friend Tom told me how to do this because I would always ask him about this restaurant we went to and he said, oh yeah, you gotta cook the onions until they start to turn brown on the outside, see? So this is what I'm doing here and then I'm gonna add the beans. but. A lot of the stuff I, I, I cook, and I've learned how to cook, I've learned from friends. I have a lot of friends that cook, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of sitting around and talking about food, so this is just one of those things that, you know, we would talk about, is the beans at this place called La Papusa Loca in Los Angeles. So, all right. Okay, so you, you take a fork and you just kind of mash them up, Mash them all around with a piece of garlic in there. That'll, that's okay. It'll be good. So, yeah, we're just kind of breaking these beans up here. And we're cooking all the We're trying to cook a lot of the water out of it and make it into more of like a paste. So, that's what we're doing here. Adding a little salt. Now is when you add the salt. Because if you add salt too early with beans, it makes the skin hard. And you'll be pulling them out of your teeth all day, the, the, the bean skin. So... I always add the salt to beans right before you're about to eat them. All right, that's my tip for the day. <laughs> 